Shilupam Sahagana Ragana Tambitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahita Krishna Chaitanya Deva Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishnu Kambitam Sha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishavanu Sute Devi Tanamami Hari Priya Pancha Vapata Upesha Kripa Sindhu Devasha Pakitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasti Bhumila Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare The worship of the spiritual master is actually the worship of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Is there translations? Yes. Individual. Yes, here. The worship of the spiritual master is actually the, the actual worship is for Krishna. Jai Sri Sri Gwani Thai Ki Jai Jai Gini Dai Ki Jai Hari Rasa Kuru Ki Jai Krishna, one of Krishna's names is Adi Guru. Adi means original or the original guru from which all other persons who act on his behalf are also given the title guru or spiritual master. The spiritual master is not a personality but he is a principle. <laughs> He also has personality, but his identity is understood through principle. And what is that principle? Devotion to Krishna. Devotion to his spiritual master, and ultimately devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jivya Surupoy Krishna Nityadas. This is the only identity of all living beings, that all living beings are ultimately only not ultimately, but only eternal servants of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever else identity we have is temporary and ultimately not real. <laughs> we have one eternal identity that never changes and only becomes realized through the process of devotional service. The spiritual master is one who is simply, as Prabhupada would always say, a postal peon. <laughs> he is more like a representative or a transparent via media. His quality is his transparency. And that's one of his qualities. He takes what is given or offered to him and passes it to his spiritual master, who ultimately passes it to his spiritual master which goes all the way back to Krishna. <coughs> so sometimes people mistakenly think that one is worshipping a person or a man or a person who has a particular position or title. No, that is wrong. We worship the spiritual master because we cannot see Krishna directly, nor can we understand exactly what Krishna wants. 
in terms of our own practice of devotional service. Therefore, the bona fide spiritual master is a feature of Krishna's mercy to the conditioned souls that allow the conditioned souls to worship the Lord in a very easy and direct way. <coughs> That's why he's called the mercy manifestation of God. Why? Because he's try he gives what his spiritual master gives him. He passes the pure devotional service and he passes it on to others. Like that. Sometimes people see from the outside, oh, he's giving special regard, people are speaking his glories, or speaking eulogies about him. He sits there on a big seat, we all sit on the floor. He gets garlands and we don't. And he gets all kinds of things. And therefore, he must really be enjoying it. He's having a ball in his mind. He's really absorbing all these things and he's thinking so, he's feeling so happy. Isn't that more like, isn't that quite brutish? Or we might say quite pretentious? Actually, it's the feature of a super egoistic person to take that position and have other people worship him. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, we have to do it. Why? In this, Mahaprabhu has ordered it. He has said, by my command, be guru, save the land. It's his order. It's not just something he requested. He has ordered each and every person to become Krishna conscious and to become an instrument to, become, to give Krishna consciousness to everyone. It's not difficult. All we have to do is simply repeat and practice, practice and repeat, what we've been given from our spiritual master with what we say enthusiasm and determination. And then that is the qualification of one who is a spiritual master. Mahaprabhu's movement is based on one very strong principle. Trinadapi Sarichena Tayori Vasahishana Amani Namana Dana Kirtaniya Sadhari Humility, tolerance, respect for others, and not asking any honor or respect for oneself. So what is this ceremony of spirit of Guru Puja that gives respect and honor to a person and he willingly accepts it? Isn't that pretense? That's abominable. That's against all of Mahaprabhu's teachings. Actually, he should be beaten with shoes. Some people like see. But what is the understanding? The understanding is it's the order. It's the order of God. It's the order of the Guru to take the responsibility. Therefore, to reject the order is more sinful than accepting whatever we have to accept on behalf of the previous spiritual masters and ultimately the Lord. So as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati writes in his very beautiful exposition called Humbler Than the Blade of Grass, he said, even if I have to go to hell and sign a pact in agreement with this, I will do that willingly and rather than to reject the instructions of my spiritual master. And he goes on to explain, and Lord Chaitanya says, if you do this, you will always be with me. Therefore, you will always have my association. So, the glorification is not for the person, it's for God. But in this world, we cannot approach God directly. We approach him through one who is practicing devotional service, what we say, according to the teachings of his spiritual master, and has come to this level of, when we say, understanding the philosophy and can teach that same philosophy to others. So the ceremony is not about the person, it's about Krishna. <laughs> but Krishna is being accepted through that person. And therefore, that person 
does it what we say as a service in this world everyone wants respect everyone wants honor and people actually base their lives on getting a position or doing something which attracts the attention and honor and respect of others and it gives them great satisfaction in their minds and hearts even if they have to spend money to do it that's secondary the idea of honor and worship is the greatest thing that the material world can offer. <laughs> Some people say the greatest happiness is sex life. And that is also mentioned in the Bhagavatam and through other scriptures. But the, what we say, the, the uh, aggrandizement of a person who is very much interested in this kind of lifestyle gives him greater and constant pleasure to know that he's popular and people worship him. So we've come to Krishna consciousness only to become humble and to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, in taking this as position as the spiritual master, one has to accept these things on behalf of the Lord. And the power, as well as when the Malati Devi was with uh, Srila Prabhupada, she was serving him very nicely. And she was cooking for him and also doing other personal service. Prabhupada really appreciated her service and she loved her service so much. In fact, it was unbearable for her to have anyone else do her service, even when the time came when she had to do other things. She wanted to always take care of Prabhupada. But at one time, Prabhupada had to go to another place and leave Malati behind. And after some time, she was feeling intense unhappiness and separation from Prabhupada. And she expressed that in a letter. And she wrote this long letter expressing how her heart is feeling unhappy and she cannot wait again to again have Prabhupada's personal association and the opportunity for his service. And so, she writes the beautiful letter, and Prabhupada acknowledges her sentiment, appreciates that sentiment, but writes back very, something very instructive. And that instruction was, you should understand that the spiritual master is not the body. The spiritual master is the principle of pure devotional service to Krishna. So if you are following the instructions that I have given you, then you and I are never separated. <laughs> Time will separate all of us. Time is all powerful. Time moves in one direction. Time brings things up together and time pulls things and people apart. The all powerful element of time. But one thing time cannot do is break relationships on the spiritual platform. These things are eternal. Once they begin, they only can increase and develop. And even though there may be separation due to proximity of what we say, location, that's that, that, that relationship only grows stronger through the instructions of the spiritual master. So the essence of the relationship and the foundation where love develops based on that relationship is the deeper we go into the instructions of the spiritual master, the more we become, what we say, connected to Krishna through that spiritual master. Krishna is the goal. Krishna is the only goal. But we love Krishna by loving the spiritual master, by serving the spiritual master in that way. And the spiritual master sees his disciples as representative of his spiritual master who will come to help him serve Krishna to, in, in his relationship with his spiritual master. Prabhupada explained that himself. He said, I'm seeing all of you as representatives of my spiritual master, which means that I'm trying to serve him and you are coming to help me serve him. And therefore, my ser I, he is actually serving me through you and I am serving him through you. Because the principle of service is eternal. 
And the, the principle of service in this world is full of iniquities and always subject to the time factor. But once begin in devotional service, that is never lost. As Prabhupada said, we have created another ISKCON in the spiritual world. And as you all depart from your bodies and ultimately attain that destination, that family only increases. <laughs> And everyone again will be together in the spiritual world, but in the perfect, in a satchitananda, in other words, where life is full of eternality, bliss, and without any ignorance, fully pure knowledge. And that is our goal. The goal of the spiritual master is to somehow bring his disciples to Krishna in pure loving devotional service. Sometimes people think, oh, the spiritual master likes this, he likes that, he likes this, he likes that. And that's true. He does. As individuals, we like and don't like. As a spiritual master also has likes and don't like. One time someone gave Srila Prabhupada a donut, a donut with some real thick sugary glaze on the outside. Prabhupada took the donut and sucked off all the glaze and didn't eat the donut. And then he would, his devotees, the disciples, were looking at him like, and Prabhupada said, everyone has their taste. <laughs> everyone has their taste. <laughs> so Prabhupada wanted to show we are also individuals too. We have our individual tastes like that. And and so, in that relationship, there is uh, likes, and we may also say dislikes, but what the spiritual master likes the most, or wants the most, is to see his disciples become Krishna conscious. That's all. Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was in Atlanta, Georgia, he had come after a long traveling all through the United States. And this was a place where people were all going to come and meet Prabhupada in group. So I remember devotees came from Nuremberg and I wanted to go. I wasn't able to go. My service wouldn't allow me to leave. The devotees had come from Nuremberg and from everywhere and practically in America to see Prabhupada in Georgia. Prabhupada gave a really powerful, enthusiastic lecture about the importance of worshipping Lord Chaitanya and Mahaprabhu in devotional service through the Harinam Sankirtan movement. It was an amazing lecture. And you can hear it, February 1st, 1975, Atlanta, Georgia. And then, after the lecture, Prabhupada called for questions. The temple was full. It was so full that the people were standing outside looking in the windows and couldn't get in. And this temple room is, it's not small, but it's not, it's not big, it's average. And so one question came. One of the questions was, Srila Prabhupada, what pleases you the most? Now, try to understand the setting. Half, at least half of the devotees there were book distributors. And we, everyone knew how much Prabhupada pushed and glorified book distribution. And so the question was what we say loaded, to use an example. They were always, they, were, they knew Prabhupada was going to say, distribute my books. What pleases you the most? Right? Prabhupada answers very powerfully. He said, what pleases the spiritual master the most is if you love Krishna. The spiritual master has come to somehow rather direct your attention, consciousness, life and worship to Krishna. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sarukha Bhumai Swaminari Siddhi Chitte Kodi Eudai Love for Krishna is natural. And Krishna is the love, most lovable object of all. Everything about Krishna is attractive. His qualities, his forms, his names, his activities, not only are they attractive, they are unlimited. 
there's no limit to each of these qualities, these categories, six of qualities. That's Krishna. He is the all-attractive personality. He's perfect in all aspects, and he's also very, very kind to his devotees. He's kind to everyone, but especially kind to his devotees. So when the spiritual masters efforts are to preach Krishna consciousness or to teach Krishna consciousness and he sees that devotee is enthusiastic about chanting that the devotee, devotee is developing nice qualities such as humility, tolerance, pridelessness, patience, respect and service to others when the spiritual master sees the devotee is learning the scriptures and also speaking the scriptures to others he thinks Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. So that's what pleases the spiritual master if we love Krishna. And we love Krishna by serving Krishna in different ways and being enthusiastic. Because the enthusiastic is the principle of bhakti. Bhakti is situated on enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a principle of the soul, it's a principle of the will. If one becomes enthusiastic about something, one will do anything to achieve a certain goal through that enthusiasm. So our enthusiasm to love Krishna, to serve Krishna, is actually the life and soul of the spiritual master's happiness. <laughs> so that is our, what we say, our tradition. We want to somehow or other love Krishna. <laughs> Because love of Krishna is what everyone is looking for. And we all have it. As Prabhupada said, it doesn't come from the outside. You can't somehow or other create it. You can't bring it in from the outside. All you can do is somehow awaken it within yourself because it already exists. It's ecstatic. It's unimpeded by anything else. And it's the principle of ultimate and pure happiness. <laughs> so that's why the spiritual masters come, to bring us to Krishna. Somehow. And you bring him to Krishna. Sometimes we say, oh, the spiritual master serve. But his devotees it's not only serve him by doing different things, but they serve him by their enthusiastic service to Krishna. That is the greatest form of happiness that the spiritual master gets. He becomes inspired in his own service, thinking, ah, this devotee is so enthusiastic to serve Krishna. Therefore, I can learn from that person also. We learn from everyone. One who thinks they have nothing to learn means that they, have, they don't know anything. <laughs> the more you realize you, how little you learn, know, the more you're open to learn more. Knowledge is as great as God, because knowledge is a feature of God's existence, and knowledge comes from Krishna. So the knowledge, in one sense, is synonymous with the existence of the Absolute Truth. So knowledge is always, always beyond our abilities. We want to have that knowledge which brings us closer to Krishna, and closer to our, the process of serving Krishna more and more. This is, the, this is the principle of knowledge. So I thank you all for coming and uh, taking part in this. His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada did something that no other spiritual master did before. Usually you worship the spiritual master only on his appearance there, his birthday. Srila Prabhupada established something in Iskand, that was never done before. Daily worship of the spiritual master. Shri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma Bandha Muhi Sarvatana Mate. Brahman was bold. Some people might say, well, he's pretentious. He's establishing everyday worship of himself. No. He's establishing everyday worship of Krishna, helping us understand how to approach Krishna. He's teaching us how to approach Krishna. 
more and more. Because we, growing up in Western societies, we know the training of what we say honoring and respecting superiors is very small. Although it's there and with relatives, friends, and sometimes with people from the outside. It's done as more or less a responsibility. But Prabhupada taught us it should be done as a feature of the heart. Where heart is the seat of emotion, heart is the seat of devotion, devotion is the principle where love grows. It's that basic principle of love is towards Krishna through the spiritual master. So one who loves the spiritual master actually loves Krishna. Actually loves Krishna. And so this ceremony is an age-old ceremony. It's traditional. It's practiced. And it's an opportunity to come closer to Krishna like that by worshiping Krishna, through worshiping his spiritual master. As we mentioned before, the spiritual master is meant to be transparent. If he takes anything for himself, to that degree, he, he blocks his own ability to perform his service to his devotees. The transparency of the spiritual master is his qualification. What is that transparency? Passes it on. It's for you, Krishna. It's for you, Srila Prabhupada. And, uh, that is the, that is the uh, what we say, feature of success. So we always pray all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the Supreme Personality of God in, in his many and multifarious forms. We are not looking for glory, we are looking for devotees to develop love for Krishna. That is the goal of this ceremony of Vyasa Puja. Mahaprabhu also performed this very wonderful ceremony when Nityananda was away for some time. Actually, when actually it was Nityananda's first meeting with with uh, the Mahaprabhu, Nityananda had been 32 years old, and the first time he came to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it was a beautiful meeting. It was at the house of Sri Vastakur. Sri Vastakur, and when Mahaprabhu and, and Lord Nityananda met. It was such a beautiful, deep felt meeting of love and exchange to the eternal, to Krishna and Balaram again uniting in the form of Gornitai. Sri Vastakura said, Tomorrow we will have the Vyasa Puja of Vyasa Deva. When we say Vyasa Puja, it is actually a glorification of the original spiritual master who brought about the Vedas in written form, and that is Vyasa Deva himself. So, when Sri Vastakur said, uh, tomorrow we will have it. So they all gathered together the next day, and the book was presented. And Nityananda was asked to take the garland and put it on Vyasadev during the ceremony. So he was given the garland to put it on Vyasadev. They had a picture of Vyasadev sitting on the Vyasa And it was time because everything was done according to time. And when the time came, the signal was given to Nityananda, put the garland on Vyasadeva. Nityananda didn't move. He stood there. Nitai, it's time. Put the garland on Vyasadeva. He didn't move. Everyone was shocked. This is ruining the ceremony. <laughs> Again, he was asked for the third time, put the garland on Vyasadeva. Lord Nityananda took the garland and put it on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <laughs> giving the understanding that he is the original spiritual master, and Vyasadeva is his representative. 
So again, he was showing that ultimately it is God who is getting the glory in the Vyasa Puja ceremony. So he taught us that by that endeavor. So I thank you all for coming. And of course, many of you are disciples of my dear God brothers who are preaching and traveling all the world, around the world, inspiring others and making devotees wherever they go. And it's wonderful to see you come here. And this is, this is, this is the glory of Srila Prabhupada's movement. Because Prabhupada said, we are like a family. We are like a family. We have many, we have one father, Srila Prabhupada, but we have many. We have our own father, which is our spiritual master, but he has brothers there like our uncles. And so the spiritual master doesn't see his disciples only as his disciples, or they are the only ones that are, no, he sees all of the devotees in Krishna consciousness as objects of his service. And that way we remain in the mood of getting away from this idea, this is my guru, this is my, my guru is better than your guru, and you know, guruism, right? It, it happens a lot like that. But Prabhupada wanted to teach us, we are all one family, and he ultimately he is the grandfather, we all have our fathers, but still, the fathers get along, the uncles get along, the relatives, the nieces, the nephews, the brothers and the sisters. It's all one family. So when we honor each other, or when we associate and serve each other, we're actually associating and serving our spiritual master by honoring and worshiping his uncles and his brothers, and ultimately, Srila Prabhupada. That is our ISKCON movement. It's a one family. When we fall into this other mood of, you know, and my guru and this and that and this, and, and we see the guru simply as a, a feature of our own happiness. Oh, I, I serve the guru because he makes me happy. When he doesn't make me happy, mm -hmm. The Guru, there's two aspects. The Guru will tell you things you don't want to hear. Like, you are in Maya. <laughs> or you need to do this to get out of Maya. <laughs> and so, therefore, another name for a spiritual master, or another term, is called Sadhu. And Sadhu has another meaning, it means to cut. So the word Sadhu means to cut through our material tendencies, material activities, and ultimately material desires, and bring us closer and closer to Krishna. So sometimes it's very difficult. It's like giving medicine, and sometimes the medicine is bitter. But we know it's medicine. Of course, the spiritual master sometimes tries to put a little sugar coating on it. But sometimes some medicines you just can't sugarcoat because it's so bitter. <laughs> and those 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 instructions are what are the what are the essence of the instructions? Chant Hare Krishna every day, sixteen rounds on beings without fail. Make this your most important activity. And you will see everything else in your life, in devotional service, and everything else you do will have value and, what we say, satisfaction. In other words, you'll become successful in other areas. Why? Because the holy name is everything. I was just listening to Tamal Krishna Goswami speaking to Prabhupada. It was a room conversation in Delhi in 1973, in November. And Tamal Krishna Goswami says, Prabhupada, I'm getting up early now. I'm getting up at 3 o'clock and I'm chanting my rounds, most of my rounds before Mangalar. Prabhupada said, yes, that will make you strong. That will make you strong. So Prabhupada has mentioned that and then he's illustrated that the success of our individual practice is our focus on the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. We may love our spiritual master, we may do so many other services, but 
The chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the Yuga Dharma. It's the means for self-realization of this age. It is the essence of all spiritual activities and can bring one to perfection in and of itself. It's so powerful. And so, Srila Prabhupada, when he was asked, what is your most important instructions to your disciples? He said, my most important instructions to my disciples, of course, at that time, everybody was his disciple, <laughs> or those who were aspiring to become his disciple. He responded to chant 16 rounds on beads without fail every day. He made the point on beads also. So this is hard for some of us. We have other responsibilities. Or maybe we have somehow or other let that instruction slip into the background a little in our life and made other things a priority. Or maybe just because of our day-to-day -day responsibilities with family, we find it hard to make that commitment of tension and emphasis. But we got to do it. Because this will bring us great, great, and, and Krishna is satisfied when he sees us serious about chanting our holy, holy name. Krishna's name is Krishna. But the seriousness or the enthusiasm that we apply in chanting the holy name pleases Krishna, and therefore his mercy flows more. Even if the chanting is not perfect, or maybe, but if he sees one is trying hard, he tries harder to give him mercy. He's reciprocal. Prabhupada said, Krishna is reciprocal. Whatever you hold in front of the mirror, you see in the reflection. So in the same way, as we approach Krishna, Krishna is going to respond to us. In the, but actually, he, he gives more. As Prabhupada used to say, what can you give with two hands that Krishna is holding with ten? And what can you keep in two hands that he's taking away with ten? Like so Krishna is always greater in giving and in taking away. <laughs> but he likes to give. But he, he'll reciprocate according to how much we, we say, show our enthusiasm. And especially on the chanting of the Holy Name. In my personal life, I found my whatever success that I have in my own practice of Krishna consciousness is based on my chanting. And I also find that that chanting, when it's done early, it has a whole different, what we say, experience and what we say, result, than when we do it, what they call the late night Japa Club. <laughs> when it's like 9 o'clock and we have six rounds to go, and each round takes 15 minutes. <laughs> Minimum. So we want to avoid that. <laughs> Therefore, therefore, make a schedule in such a way that you can gradually, what we say, as time goes on, become more and more focused on early jhana. And then you'll see. Because that pleases the spiritual master and also very much pleases Krishna. And it will give you the strength and extra strength in your whole practice of spiritual life. It's everything. The Holy Name is everything. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purnya Sutya Nitya Mukta Abhinna Tom Nami Nami Nam. Krishna's name is Krishna and it's pure, free from all material definitions and entanglements. It is what we say liberating and there's nothing of this material world. It's descent. Goloka Premadan Harinam Sankirtan. This is the glory of our movement. Our success, as Prabhupada said, I have become successful in spreading Krishna consciousness because I emphasize the chanting of the Holy Names. So it's the best form of practice. It's the best form of preaching. <laughs> Both. So I don't know what else I can say. Except that uh, I'm very happy to see everyone who's come. Thank you all for coming. And uh, it's an opportunity to glorify Lord Chaitanya and his movement and to understand deeper our relationship with Krishna and our spiritual master. With that. 
That that is something that is never lost. Time only brings it stronger and stronger as we go deeper into that relationship. I don't know. Should I call for questions? Is it proper? Would anyone like to make a comment? Question? Correction? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ayodhya. Thank you. Ayodhya, right? Yes. Yeah. Maharaj, oh. can you please explain? Uh, early Jaffa is very important. In the same time, we have Mangal Arati to do this. So, how to manage everything? It's not time for everything. You're doing Mangal Arti with your family together? Sometimes, not mm -hmm. very often. Mm -hmm. One of the things I do, if you can do Mangal Arti every day with your family, that's nice. But one thing I do is every morning when I get up, I play Prabhupada singing Guru Rastakam prayers. And then I also chant Shikshastakam prayers. There's one devotee in our movement who's a Grihastha, a great preacher. His name is Vaisheshika. He does the whole morning program by himself when he has to. He gets up, chants the Mangalarti, chants Tulsi Puja, chants Guru Puja, chants a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, like that. And then he, he performs his... In other words, using the principle of utility, the idea is that whatever your situation is, somehow or other, figure out. Mm -hmm. So you can always do that. Like when I'm taking my shower, I'm playing Mangalorti. <laughs> I bring Prabhupada and on the iPad into the bathroom, I turn it on, and then some Prabhupada Prabhupada's playing. So I'm hearing Mangalorti, I'm also singing along occasionally. I, mean, I don't have time because of whatever I'm doing else to have to do a formal Mangal Arati. So you can do that. You can do that with Tulsi Puja. There's one devotee who actually did the whole morning program on a CD. You can play the whole morning program. If you can do it with your family, that's even better. But you have to chant your job. And Japa and reading there are always two things we somehow find, well, later. Later. There's always time later. But later, but when you get involved in the day's activities, it's really hard to find that time sometimes. Really difficult. So early is the best time. The best thing, of course, is to make a schedule and try to work with that. So, if you have to choose between Mangal Arti and Japa, I would sing Mangal Arti in the shower. In Japa, you can sit down. That you can't do in the shower. <laughs> you can chant Japa, but it's not like you can do your 16 so. You can even dance in the shower, because especially if the water is too cold. I mean, you know, it's also a little bit of ec ecstasy there. <laughs> Yeah, so a devotee, there's, there's a principle that if you want to do it, Krishna gives you the intelligence. If you don't want to do it, and you think, uh, and there's no, you can't think of how to do it, because the desire is too weak. The stronger the desire, the more the intelligence reveals the, the means. Yeah. Hope that helps. Sure, board. <laughs> yes, I had also the same question because uh, mm -hmm. regarding the japa and the reading books, because these things are very important. We read Shla Prabhupada's book and uh, chant uh, uh, japa, and uh, we who live mostly of us, most of us live outside. Uh, we we find a lot of good excuses like uh, job, uh, children, uh, cooking. Uh, 
uh, ironing, ironing uh, so, and uh, then this is for those who are in the temple, they need... So my question was how basically to uh, make our lives that we can do it, but uh, you, you explained. Well, for one person may be different than another. One of the things that devotees do in some places is that they, those who live outside, they all live in the same area. They try to get apartments and housing in the same area, and then in the morning they come together at somebody's house from Mongolia, and then they all get together and do it. You see, when you're doing it alone, it's hard. When you do it with others, it's more inspirational, and you look forward to it. So, it's nice to bring in others if you can. And you can go over each other's house if you live within a five or ten minutes drive. Like that. <clears throat> Those with children, it's difficult. You know, but yeah, and another question what I would have is that what is the relation? We were talking about the disciples and the, um, us becoming uh, also uh, gurus somehow. Yeah, so what is the relation of uh, uh, mature devotee and uh, a humble disciple? Would you mean two different persons? No, no. What does it mean? Oh. What, what would be... Uh, is mature? What is connection to be a mature? If you're mature, you're humble. <laughs> you can't reach maturity without practicing humility properly. But humility is the, pre the feature of devotion to Krishna. Humility is the first principle of a devotee's cultivation of devotional service. Humility is the, the principle that teaches us our position, and humility attracts the attention of Krishna. That's very much. One who's actually humble gets the attention of the Lord. Okay. And a devotee who's humble doesn't really ask for much and is satisfied with a little. One who's never satisfied can never be humble. Mm -hmm. So practicing humility means to learn how to become satisfied with what we need and the opportunity for service. Like that. So a mature devotee is one who is, who is practicing humility regularly <laughs> through service. Mm -hmm. You can't make maturity without you having that quality. And humility is natural. <clears throat> you want to be humble? Just practice. Because it's you. Humility is you. That's the nature of the soul. The soul is by nature humble in relationship to God. Sometimes we have a hard time being in humble relationship to others. That's the real test. <laughs> But when we practice humility in relationship to others, that means what we do is we, we look for the opportunity to serve others. That, that's the principle of humility, is to try to serve others in such a way that they benefit through that service. Mm -hmm. And you become happy through that. Not that you want to benefit others because you think, because you want to become known as a a, a great do-gooder. That's not humility. You can't go on like that. You can do it for a little while, but after a while, because there's no there's no real satisfaction. Then got then got the French flowers. Is that Indra? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, maturity comes by way of practicing devotional service with humility. Okay, does that help? Yeah, thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? Okay, thank you. So his divine grace, A C Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada.
Mesdames et Messieurs.